to another episode of Really Dicey. Today we're going to talk about... What are we talking about? <laughs> There's some fantastic <laughs> books. We have The Dungeon Alphabet and The Monsters Alphabet. Both by Goodman Games. Okay. Now these have been a uh, big help to you while you're game oh, mastering, right? These are so much help and they're, um, they're just fun to flip through. So um, these like most of Goodman Games products, are made with uh, a philosophy, an old-school philosophy, old-school gaming. Um, and I feel like Goodman Games takes old-school more seriously than some, some other people do. Yeah. Because um, it's not just a throwback to the rules and the, the uh, uh, you know, the traditional monsters and things. It's a throwback to a certain style a, a certain assumption about things. They would call it, they make a big, uh, they often talk about Appendix N um, in the original DMG guide, um, mm. DMG, uh, there was Appendix N. And Appendix N was a list of um, source material that inspired Gygax and Anderson, uh, Conan, uh, Jack Vance and the Dying Earth, uh, Lovecraft, hmm. um, okay, all that crazy stuff. So, in the dungeon, the dungeon alphabet, for instance, in the introduction, they say that uh, a dungeon, the underworld, is a magical place where the rules of the surface world no longer apply. It okay. is not just a, a maze buried in the ground. Um, it is almost a, an Alice in Wonderland place where strange things happen. They like go a, back to the days when... A playground of magic and chaos. Yeah, yeah, where you didn't really think about it. You know, back in the old days when you were, we were a kid and you were playing in, you were playing in a dungeon and you at the bottom of the dungeon and you're fighting a dragon. And no one thinks, what the heck is a dragon doing, you know, 200 feet below the earth? Yeah, okay. So... That is the philosophy that this books, these both of these books used, kind of the wild frontier crazy philosophy. Okay, so you mentioned the philosophy book. What exactly are these books? Oh, these books are an alphabetical list of things to be found in a dungeon. Okay. F is for fungi. You can roll an eight-sided die and there are eight strange forms of fungi to find in your dungeon. G is for gold. Roll a 20 sided or die for types of gold. Oh, okay. Right? So your characters find some gold. You roll 19. This gold is unprocessed. It's in nuggets, flakes, or dust. This gold is uh, in the form of thread. It has been used as embroidery. Well, they oh, get a lot okay. more stranger. They get, sometimes this gold is cursed. Hmm. Um hallways. So this will be things you can find in the dungeon, parts of the dungeon. M is for magic, all sorts of strange magical things to find in the dungeon. A bearskin rug that attacks intruders. Okay, all yeah. right. Yeah, okay. A monocle that reveals secret doors. O is for oozes, all okay. sorts of different slimes. A fountain. A fountain of mysterious origin lies within the dungeon. At regular intervals, the fountain produces glob, uh, gouts of one or more types of oozes, jellies, or puddings. Okay. Some of them float away in bubbles. <laughs> so uh, this game, this book here, it just you can roll on it, you can roll on the charts, and it suggests all sorts of really strange things for your dungeon. Some okay. are stranger than others, and... Um, if you're stuck for ideas, you can roll on it. It's it's a lot of fun to just browse through. Okay. Yeah. So we you say it's, it's a book. Uh, it's a collection of really like um, random crazy charts. Yes. For, for game masters to make their dungeons even more wild and crazy than. <laughs> that is exactly it. Okay. U is for undead, an insane lich composer working to complete his masterpiece. So yeah, that's, uh, I have to. Yeah, Goodman Games have always done some really creative. You know, it doesn't give you everything you need. I mean, obviously that asks, uh, that raises a whole host of questions. But you can build an entire camp, uh, an entire adventure about that. Yeah. 
you know, what is going on? Why is this guy trying to comp compose this music? What happens if you help him succeed or you thwart him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, all the way down to, let's see, at the end, Z is for Zowie. <laughs> okay, so okay. Zowie, the Zowie is the really strange turn at the end of uh, the adventures. Um, that, ad that adventure on Bearer's Peak where the uh, on top of the peak, the big dungeon turns out to be a spaceship. What? Okay. <laughs> Back in the early days, there were no rules and TSR was making stuff up and they'd, they'd, they'd mix genres and they'd put in all sorts of crazy things that don't make any sense and, and they weren't too worried about what this is going to do to a campaign campaign world or how this is going to affect other products. They just, they just did it to mm. see what happened. Zowie. You can find an abandoned wharf set on the shores of a sunless sea. Okay. Or you can find the rusting remains of a 57 Chevy. <laughs> What's going on? How does that affect my game world? So this, this book is a lot of fun. The illustrations are absolutely fantastic. All sorts of really wild illustrations here. And all sorts of strange sort of settings that you see in um, um, Dungeon World Classics. It's 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 a uh, system neutral book. It can be used for any system, but it definitely has a Dungeon World Classic, a okay. Dungeon Crawl Classic vibe to it. It's uh, it's just fun to flip through. There's a section in here. B is for books. Here's a hundred book titles, a hundred fantasy book titles. Oh, okay. Which is incredibly useful. You find the book on the shelf. What is it? Well, I'll see. I'll tell you what it is. It's, uh... Oh, hold on. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's... okay. Roll some dice. See what we got here. I got seven. You got a seven. Okay. B is for books. Okay. The title is The Apostos of, Sa of, the, Apostos of the Saints by Father Bulwark Idol. That so happens that's the book I'm looking for. There you go. Fantastic. <laughs> and on another chart for books, the special property is that book contains a spell of random power. Oh, okay. Uh, written in the margins. Hmm. So it's not even, it's just written in the margins. That's clever. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Yeah, good big games always do some really wild creative stuff in their games. So this is definitely worth picking up. I uh, well, love this book. Well, you have... This also. The second one. First, the second book they made was called The Monster Alphabet. It's the same principle, only it's Just specifically enough. about monsters. Okay. So it has, um, again, it has really fantastic art. It, uh, it starts out with a chart for making a monster, literally. What does the head look like? What do the arms look like? What is the body made of? Okay. Uh, and then if you thrip, flip through the book, you get all sorts of strange things from monster properties to monster resistance to monster, monster's lore. Uh, sometimes they can be used to make specific monsters. Sometimes, like, uh, like the Lich Composer that I was mentioning earlier, they can be used to spark entire adventures. Like um, D is for dragons. Roll a nine, you get a clockwork dragon. A reanimated re dragon brain in a jar has command of his growing cult of cobalt minions and is using them to excavate his body and create a new vessel worthy of his magnificence. I mean, that's a story right there. Exactly, exactly. And they're building him a clockwork body of uh, gears and hissing steam. <laughs> that's fun. Wow. Yeah, okay. that is a lot of fun. Um, this book, The Monsters alphabet requires a little bit even a little bit more thought than the dungeon alphabet because um sometimes you get monsters that just aren't practical for your needs yeah um so it's you, it's really <laughs> it's really not going to help you in the middle of the game unless you're really quick on your feet yeah okay. but it'll help you populate uh, the dungeon or if something's bothering the town and if you haven't got a clue, they're great to look through. Um, yeah. You can get all sorts of weird stuff. And sometimes it's too weird to use, and sometimes it's just weird enough. Yeah, that's interesting, because um, it sounds like this book is, if you don't want to look through your monster manuals, you just want something different and fun, yeah. random, well, something very random. Exactly. Uh, um, Dungeon Crawl Classics 
Um, doesn't use a monster's manual. Every mm -hmm. monster is unique. Yeah. And so they encourage you to, you know, there are there's no type of monster. There, you know, there's just individual monsters. So this helps you make individual monsters. Again, like the the dungeon alphabet, this is system neutral. It just fits really well with dungeon crawl classics. Okay. So this is a, another very useful book. Okay. A excellent. lot of fun, useful and fun. What rating would you give this? Well, I would give these um, on a scale of 3 to 18, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that these books have a strength of 17. Oh, okay. Yes, I think these are fun to use. Uh, they are inspiration to look through. Um, uh, the only reason you know, they don't get an 18 is that uh, sometimes they're just too weird for what you need. But you can always change that. Yeah. These are available at Goodman Games. You should really pick these up if you're a game master and you uh, you appreciate an old school vibe or you just want some extra weirdness in your game. You should pick these up for yourself. All right, excellent. Well, thank you very much and have a great day.